f of x is a cubic polynomial with this constant k in there, and we're asked to show that for all values of k, that it will go through to 0. So we can substitute x equals 2 in. And these will cancel to give zero. Therefore, and this is a fancy way of writing for all k. Next, we're asked to find the values of k for which the equation f of x equals 0 has exactly two distinct roots. So it's a cubic, but we're asking for two distinct roots, and that means we need um, a repeated root, essentially. Well, first of all, let's divide through by a factor that we know. So we have the x cubed minus k plus 4x plus 2k is equal to 0. And x minus 2 is a factor. Since when we substitute 2 in, we get 0. We showed that in part A. Technically, this is a factor theorem. Therefore, we can divide through by x minus 2. Now, there's no x cubed term, but still include it here. And then let's do the division. x is into x cubed. Multiply back through subtract, bring down the next term. x is into 2x squared, now when we subtract these we've got minus kx and minus 4x and then we're minusing minus 4x so they're going to cancel and we're just going to be left with minus kx. And finally x is into minus kx and minus k. And we expect to get 0. If you didn't get 0 it means you made a mistake and you should look back through to see that what mistake what that mistake is. One time when I did it um, in a practice video, I wrote uh, pl plus instead of minus, and then I spotted that I had made that mistake. Okay, so we've got x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x minus k equals 0. And either... x minus 2 is repeated root, or x squared plus 2x minus k has repeated root. So I'm going to call this one like number one. Um, in that case, we can basically substitute two. If x minus two is a repeated root, I can substitute two into here, and I must get zero. 
So it would be 2 squared plus 2 times 2 minus k is equal to 0. That would be uh, 4 plus 4 minus k, so k would be 8. And the second scenario, the discriminant of x squared must be 0. So it's going to be b squared, which is 4, minus 4, a, c, so 4 plus 4k is equal to 0, k must equal minus 1. We were asked at the start to find the values of k for which the equation has exactly two distinct roots, and we've just done that. I'm just going to write by it just to emphasize. So x minus 2 repeated root. Um, I've not actually found the repeated root in this case, but I'm not too worried. So, um, I think I'll just uh, leave it like that. Now, we're on to the last part. Given that k equals, uh, is greater than 0, and the x-axis is a tangent to the curve, and that the line y equals p intersects it in three distinct points, Find the set of values that P can take. Okay, a sketch is really going to help us here. So we know it's a positive cubic. Um, it's not going to be something like this because we have like an x term. We already know that, remember, we know that uh, x equals 2 is a factor. So we need the x-axis to be a tangent. And the only possibility is if we have something like this. So that would be a tangent because you have a zero gradient or something like this. Now, could it be either of those? Well, actually, no, because the function, if you remember, had a plus 2k in there and we're told that k is positive. So it's got to be this one rather than the other one. This is 2k. Um, what this actually means is that there's a there's a repeated root. There's one root here and then a repeated root. So f of x must have a repeated root. And k is greater than 0. So k is equal to 8. Remember in that last question, we, we looked at the situation where there was a repeated root, and these are the two possibilities. So k is equal to 8. And that means f of x is going to be x cubed minus 12x plus 16. All I've done is substituted 8 into here minus 12x plus 16. Right, now we're interested where the line y equals p intersects in three distinct places. Now, if I put it here, it would be two, but any more and I'd get three. So I can see straight away actually that p has to be greater than zero. But there's going to be a point here where if I go above it, um, I'd get one point. If right on here, I'd actually get two distinct points. It's got to be less than this value here. 
and that means um, we need to find the stationary points. And by the way, I've not really sketched it correctly. It's not actually going to be when x is zero and at two k. I've just, uh, I've just that was just a sketch to give us an idea of what was going on. So basically, we need to find the stationary point. Find the local maximum, in fact. We know already that the local minimum is at 2, by the way. So we can differentiate. And that is going to equal 0 for stationary points. Therefore, x squared minus 4 equals 0, and it's got to be that x is plus or minus 2. And when x equals minus 2, we get a local maximum. So all I need to do is substitute that into f of x. f of minus 2 is going to be minus 8 plus 24, double negative, plus 16. It's going to be 32. And we're basically done. Find the set of values that p can take. It must be that p is bigger than 0, but it's less than 32. Okay, brilliant.